morning. Yeah, that's how I make my coffee. Let's go downstairs and work out. I've been looking for the perfect small hoops like this. It's gotten huge. I think it's the biggest one yet. Variegated Monstera. <laughs> everyone so in my last video i did a really quick montage of how i make my coffee and since i was asked to explain the process that's what i'm gonna go ahead and do got my cup here i just fill it up then you grab your water heater i've had this one for eight years it's my trusted water heater i'm just gonna go ahead and plug it in over here and the reason why i like to measure out the water is because if i only heat up this amount it takes less time and if it takes less time to make my coffee i'm gonna be a happier person so that's the whole reason behind that it's gonna pour it in yeah. <laughs> see this is why i normally do not make a video before i have my coffee let's do that again got my water and of course, when I hold it over the sink, I do it perfectly. Let that heat up. Clean up my mess. Okay, so while that's heating up, I grab this. This is my wrench drip. So that's how I make my coffee every morning. I don't have a coffee maker on purpose because I feel like this makes the coffee so much better. It makes it really concentrated. I got this from my mom years ago and I've been using it ever since. Take that, you put it on here. It's got my Cafe Du Monde coffee. It has chicory in it and the flavor is just perfect. The amount you put in just depends on how dark you like your coffee. I like mine to be pretty dark. It has like about that much coffee in it right now. I'm gonna take my hot water and I'm just gonna pour it through like so. It takes a few minutes, but I think it's worth it for sure. This is what's happening right now. It drips through like just at that rate. As I see it go down, you just pour more through like that. I let the time pass by doing other things because you know, there's always something to be done. I like putting away the dishes from the dishwasher and then I keep just looking at it and pouring some more through. Milo is still sleeping right now. I always have to have my cup of coffee in before I go and walk him. That's the last of the water. Once this last amount drips all the way through, we are all set. Look how concentrated that is. This is oat milk creamer, the vanilla flavor by Coffee Mate. This is not my favorite. My favorites are it's the Silk Soy Vanilla. This one by Trader Joe's, the soy creamer, is my other favorite. I just mix in the amount of coffee creamer I want. Yeah, that's how I make my coffee. Good morning, sunshine. <laughs> this is you. You want to go outside? No, he doesn't. I took Milo out and everything, and now I am just having a rice cake with some cookie butter on top. I think I got this like three days ago, and I'm the only one eating it. Look at that. No problem. Okay, so it is now 10 a.m. Let's go downstairs and work out. That was a pretty good leg workout. I'm really excited because we got dumbbells. We've been waiting for dumbbells forever. I'm about to do some of my plant care and it's all before noon. I'm feeling pretty productive today, but before I get into all of my plant care, I wanna thank today's video sponsor, Ana Luisa. Ana Luisa is a sustainable jewelry company and I'm so excited to be partnering with them. They make tarnished, free, long lasting jewelry that are made from clean, low impact recycled materials. Their products are also affordable. 
bottles. Prices start as low as $39 and there's a range depending on what materials you choose. They also release their products in small batches. So that is a way to reduce waste as well. Their goal by the end of 2020 is to have a net zero carbon footprint and that's, you know, freaking amazing for the environment. I chose a few pieces by them. I actually was wearing it in one of my Instagram stories. I was talking about something completely different and some people with really good eyes were asking me where my necklace was from. I'm also wearing some earrings by them. This necklace is their small ball and chain necklace. And I really like it because you have the option to make it shorter or longer. And you know, I like minimalist pieces. I am also wearing these earrings. I've been looking for the perfect small hoops like this that actually hug the ears. This outer earring is the mini huggy hoops and this inner one is called Milo aka my dog's name so i feel like i really had to get it it's also adorable of course this one has the cubic zirconia in it and i think it's really cute down below in the description i will have the link to anna luisa so you can check out their stuff and i also have a coupon code for 10 percent off if you use the code minimalist cali 10 i'm wearing an earring called milo I'm wearing an earring named after you. Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? I think in the last video, I showed my fiddly fig and there's a new leaf at the very top and it's gotten huge. I think it's the biggest one yet. It's this one right here. Oh my goodness, it's huge. It's not, it hasn't fully firmed up yet. It's so new, you can tell maybe in the video that this is like kind of lighter still and then these are like the older leaves that are dark and this one is definitely soft compared to them i will check on the water reservoir oh gosh uh yeah it's dry so i'm just gonna pour some water through i think i watered you last week Possibly every time I talk about a string of hearts or anything like that I try to mention that they're still in soil and then I still get questions all the time asking if they're in Lekka string of hearts All of them are still in soil. I don't mind drought tolerant plants in soil But I can kind of talk about how I water and take care of the plants that I still have in soil So what I like to do is for the older leaves just give it a little squeeze squeeze feel them and see if it's soft and if it's soft then i can go ahead and water it so i prefer the maintenance for my plants and semi hydroponics because i don't have to wait for it to be done dripping like this this is leaning a bit um That look awkward. Oh yeah, that looks real awkward. It's like, whoop. <laughs> A little better, but with the sun that way, it's gonna pull the plant that way. So that's good. I, I want it to be pretty even, especially because it's in semi-hydroponics without anything else to really support it besides the LECA surrounding it. So I don't want it to be too leaned over and then one day just plop out yeah that would be a pain sometimes i like to alternate and do all of the plants in semi hydro first and then take care of the soil plant but sometimes i don't it just depends on my mood yeah the water level is good on this guy this is my epiprinum panatum variegata so again this is in soil i am gonna go ahead and just water it through the top Make sure it just gets soaked, let it drain out, and then I'll put it back up. This is another method I sometimes use, just kind of depends on how I feel. It depends on whether or not I feel like going to get this. <laughs> sometimes I don't really trust the moisture meter because there's been times that I check in a few places and it says it's dry and I stick my finger in it and it's still kind of moist. Sometimes I'll just pick up the whole plant because you can tell by how white it is. Like this one needs water, but um, I'll just stick the moisture meter in anyways. And you can see that it's dry. This is the philodendron birkin that my husband got for me. 
maybe I have trust issues, but uh, with this moisture meter, I look at obviously that part to see if it's wet or dry. And I will also look here because if it's actually moist, some of the soil should stick to the end. And if it's dry, it shouldn't have anything when you pull it out like that. So yeah, I'm gonna water this too. I use my plant spray, my preventative plant spray for both my plants in some hydroponics and my plants in soil. And I'm out, so it's kind of perfect timing for me to talk about it again. I've already made a video on it before, but you know, there's no harm in making another one. If you just search plant spray on my channel, then you will be able to find it. But here we go. Let's just make it real quick. Here's the bottle I use, the Health Aid kombucha bottle. If you want the details of like everything else, the nozzle and label maker, all of that, it's in the other video. This is super duper simple. I still have a little bit in there, but I got some neem oil. Um, this is from Home Depot, but you can get it on Amazon, one that has actually more neem in it. Neem is stinky, so just be warned. I'm just gonna pour in like a splash. This is peppermint oil. This helps with the smell of neem. I'm gonna add like five drops. It also helps. Okay, I didn't count. That might have been a little bit more than five drops. It also helps with um, pest prevention too. So then I'm gonna give it a little mix in here together. And then I fill up the rest with water. This is a 16 ounce bottle. So I'm gonna fill it up to there with the water. So I filled it up to there and then leave a little bit of space because I want to be able to mix it all up. I've used this on all of my plants. I almost forgot to add Dr. Bronner's soap. So this is the Castle Soap in Peppermint. They have a lot of different scents. So add a little splash of this in it too. Like that much. And yeah, you just shake it up and use it on your plants. Every now and then I do spray down the entire plant, including the top of the soil and all of the leaves until the plant is like completely soaked. Let it rest for like 10-ish minutes and then wipe down all the leaves because it helps to make it shiny and it's good for pest prevention. But when I'm lazy or I don't have the time, all I do is I spray down the soil, like the top of the soil. If you are concerned about how your plants will do with this mixture, um, you might wanna test it out on a few first, but it's worked well for me. But just because something's worked well for me doesn't mean it's gonna work well for everybody. It also depends on how concentrated you make your stuff. If you make it super concentrated, then it could be a little too much for the plant to handle. Or if you have it, like the leaves completely soaked and then you put the plant right back into the sun, it could be too much and it could burn your plant. I just spray the top of the soil like that and then you know the plant absorbs it and everything so that helps with pre pest prevention. And I use the same mixture for plants in some hydroponics. I'm just gonna spray the top of the water like that. And then neem is great because it's also like a fungicide too. I haven't watered this one yet. This is the yucca plant and it doesn't have to be watered yet. When you get stuff from Home Depot, they definitely water the crap out of their plants. I'm just gonna spray the top of it like so. I did it when I first brought it home too. Every single time I show my honeycomb shelves, I get asked about where it's from. I don't wanna link it in every single video. Uh, if you search honeycomb shelves on my channel, you will find the actual link of the shelves because the person sells a lot of different sizes so you can check that out if you want but yeah i absolutely love them this monster salt of kana pretty happy we we'll just pull out some leaves i don't like seeing leaves that are yellow or brown i know some people leave it in until it falls off but that's not me i just poured the water in there because this one's in semi-hydro and I'm just gonna spray the top of the LECA with this. Check that out, oh my goodness. 
I always talk about this plant and how my dad gave it to me. It was like a three leaf cutting and now it's amazing. I feel like I've always kind of appreciated some of the common plants, but more so even lately, the prices of some of the harder to find plants have gotten insane. Wow, look at that variegation. This one I got from a plant trade. It was initially a little bit of a fail. Then I revived it and I was sent another piece. And now it's thriving in Lucca. This is my first Monstera Adansonite ever. I got it from my friend in a plant trade. Pretty cool. It really needs to be repotted. It's not really full at the top. It just trails a ton, but it looks kind of cool anyway, so I don't really mind it. Do you see how fast I'm able to do this? This is why I love semi hydroponics for the in-between flush days. It's a boo blue beauty. Oh my god. Oh my god. No. No. I did not screw it on all the way. Shoot. I literally just spilled neem oil everywhere. Oh my god. That's not good. That's not good. Mostly on me. So, I mean, that's better. But shoot. I just showered and I basically just bathed in neem oil. This is ridiculous. Why am I like this? I started out today by also spilling the water everywhere. Why am I like this? The Philodendron Rio Sport is such a beauty. Oh my gosh. Yeah, this needs water. This is like the only plant I ever got from Logis, the Albo Syngonium. Um, it's had such crazy variegation that each of the leaves keep dying off because of the white. It can't photosynthesize and I haven't like really been touching it. So I've had this leaf and that one for so long and this one's like fully white over here. It hasn't died off yet. Like the all white leaves. That's actually kind of surprising. So maybe I just finally found a happy spot for it. It's growing a new leaf right there too. Salsa Pacana El Salvador has also been doing pretty well over there. Okay, so there are a few plants that in this house I cannot reach without my husband's help. One of them is that Rapidophora tetrasperma. That's the tissue culture one. And I cannot reach that one at all. So I always have to wait for him so I could water it. So because of that, sometimes that gets neglected, not gonna lie. But you know, it's still alive. This right here is the variegata monstera stem cutting. Okay, so this is our variegated monstera, the elbow, and it is growing such beautiful leaves. I don't wanna to touch the white, but look how variegated this is. That leaf is new, that one is new. This one is actually new too at the top. It's growing kind of weird. I've never had a plant grow a new leaf starting from the bottom of the stem again, because normally, once it starts vining like that, it'll only grow from the top. So it started growing some at the top, some at the middle, and also some at the bottom again. Isn't that weird? So that's brand new. This leaf is new. This leaf at the bottom is new. It's kind of crazy. And then, you know, it's unfurling another one over there. And then look how it's growing. So that looks good and everything. And then if you come over here, it starts to stretch out. Can you see how it's growing? It's weird. I am contemplating on whether or not I want to chop this and propagate it because it's growing like a new arm. This Hartley philodendron, I cannot reach without my husband's help. So there's some weeks that I totally forget to ask him to help me with it. So yep, that's there. This Pink Princess, I did switch to semi hydroponic. I don't remember if I said that or not on my YouTube channel. Look at the new pink leaves. Pretty pink. Cute. It's looking kind of full, right? And I switch it to this pink pot because I feel like it fits. 
a little bit loud because of the fan, but I am eating lunch now. And I am having this from Trader Joe's. It's the chickenless mandarin orange morsels. I feel like they can come up with a better name than that, but you know, it's good. I like it. I like to cook some food in bulk, like have a bunch of rice, green beans, like some sort of green, probably rice most of the time, or like depending on if we're making pasta or something, then I'll have like a large amount on that. And then throughout the week, we just scoop it and it just makes it a lot easier instead of having to cook it every single time. We got some rice, got some green beans and the mandarin orange chicken. I'm gonna throw some sriracha on it. I'm gonna go ahead and eat this and then edit this video so I can get it up today. Don't forget to check out Anna Luisa, link in the description below, along with the coupon code MinimalistCali10. That's it, thanks for watching, bye.